very much. <clears throat> Hello, everyone. My name is Michael Chasen, and I'm the CEO of Precision Hawk, and I'm also chairman of the Drone Advisory Committee. And I'm incredibly excited to be here at what is the largest inner drone to date and one of the leading conferences and communities in the commercial drone space, not only here in the United States, but around the world. And the reason that that's so important is because this is the group of people that has helped driving the industry forward. And I think it's very important that we understand both what is going on today and how we all need to be working together to help the drone industry reach that next level, take that big step forward. And so what I want to talk about with you today are, are three things. First, I want to talk about what this market wants, where it wants to go, and and what needs to happen to help get it there. I, I want to talk about where the market is today so we can put a framework around what's happening today. And then we can talk about what does this community need to do to help the market get where it needs to go. Now, uh, when you're talking about what the market wants, I, I always like to reflect a little bit uh, back onto a famous quote that Steve Jobs said. And he said, some people say, give the customer what they want, but that's not my approach. Our job is to figure out what they're going to want before they do. And, and this quote is thrown around all the time in the entrepreneur community, in the tech community, and I hear it a lot in the, in the drone community as well. Because you have all of these different companies, both startups and early stage companies and more mature companies, all trying to figure out where does this industry need to go to. And they often talk about just the visionary leadership of Steve Jobs in determining how he was going to incorporate the graphical user interface into the desktop or how he was going to put a, a small uh, computer in everybody's pocket. And that these were things that the, the customer at the time didn't necessarily say that they wanted, but he had this vision that this is where the industry was going. Now, the interesting thing is a lot of people say, well, this quote was built upon a much older, also famous quote from Henry Ford, who was the founder and CEO of Ford Motors. And he was quoted as saying, if I had asked people what they wanted, they would have said faster horses. Now, the thing about this quote that people like to throw around a lot as well is that it's completely untrue. He actually never said that. Uh, you can find a lot of interesting quotes attributed to famous people on the internet. Nonetheless, if you had actually gone back in the 1800s and asked people what they wanted, they might have said uh, they wanted an easier way to remove the average of 40 dead horses a day that were clogging up the streets of New York. Because of course, with all these horses and carriages carrying everybody around, uh, a horse would die, it would clog up the streets for hours as they figured out how to lug off this large dead animal and where to even put it, a major problem with congestion at the time. They might have said that they were looking for a way to eliminate the 1,200 metric tons of manure that were being dropped and produced in the streets each day. Houses were actually built up staircases because there was so much manure from all the transportation horses, and especially when there was rain, the sewage would overflow. It was a horrible, horrible problem in the 1800s. Or lastly, they might say someplace to stable the 100,000 horses that were servicing the city every night where they needed to be fed and rested to be ready to go the next day. These were the major problems of the day. So the reason why someone might not say, I need faster horses, is because that wasn't the challenges they were facing in the 1800s. So similarly, if you were to ask people in the drone community what they wanted, uh, you'd have to reflect back on uh, what people in the 1800s who were in the uh, community of transportation horses and what they wanted, because they probably wouldn't have said they wanted faster horses. They would have said they wanted less horse shit. <laughs> so if you ask people in this community what is it that they want, some people might say, uh, I want my delivery sent directly to my door in a matter of hours. Uh, some people might say, I want to get high resolution aerial imagery and photography for infrastructure inspection. And some people might say, uh, when are flying taxis going to be available to handle the congestion in my city? So these are the things that people might say that they want. But really, for us to be able to achieve these things, there are two core pillars that need to be accomplished. One is technology. We need technology that can keep drones in the air for longer, carrying heavier payloads, and can operate safely within our existing national airspace system. 
But the second thing we need to go along with that improvement as technology is the right policies. We need policies that can support all of these use cases that we're thinking of for drones today, but also don't limit the idea that we're thinking of the ideas that we're thinking of tomorrow. And, and that's a pretty tall order. We have to not only improve the technology, but we have to work hand in hand between public and private industry to improve the policies, to make sure that we're putting in place an infrastructure that can support this next level of drone deployment. So if these are the goals for what we need to accomplish to be able to address all of those things that the consumers think that they want, where are we starting out? Where is the market today? Well, if you look at the market today, um, already the, the, the drone market for uh, the military is a, is a $20 billion market, and it's anticipated to grow to over $50 billion in the next few years. The, the consumer drone market is a $5 billion drone market expected to grow to over $20 billion in the next few years. And yet the commercial drone market, the part that this conference is heavily focused on, is, is still just beginning. Now, now, we all understand why, because prior to August of 2016, when the FAA came out with uh, the rules and regulations about Part 107, companies didn't know whether it was legal or what the process was to start deploying drone technology. And then as soon as Part 107 came out, we saw Precision Hawk, a lot of companies starting to work with small groups of pilots or check out how they might utilize this technology and a whole bunch of just uh, startup pilot programs. But then what we saw in late 2018 and early this year was these pilot programs had reached fruition and people were now starting to deploy enterprise drone technology en masse. So a lot of people say, well, Michael, you know, you, you have an interesting perspective as both the CEO of Precision Hawk, one of the leading companies in the commercial drone space, but also as chair of the Drone Advisory Committee. Where are we on this hockey stick curve that people often talk about for exciting new technology ventures? Where are we? When are we going to start to see the exponential level of growth? Um, people, they, they, they want to know where on the hockey stick curve is the market today? Well, I don't think it's useful to just look at the hockey stick curve and put a point on it and say, this is where the commercial drone industry is. I think you actually have to overlay that onto um, uh, uh, the, the chart from a very famous book, Crossing the Chasm. And you have to understand, are we are still in that early stage of adoption? Are we in the more mature stages of adoption? And if you were to overlay that, I, I might say that actually the, the, the drone industry has made incredible progress. In, in the last few years, and in particular, I'd say even just over the last 12 months. And this is where I think we are. I think we're at the end of that chasm. I think we're about to cross over into the, the pragmatists, the people that'll start deploying drone technology as part of just their natural business cycle. Now, why do I think that we're here? Why do I think that we're not yet over the chasm? Or, or why do I think that we're at the end of it? Well, how do I, how do I know where we are? Well, let, let me share a, a, a couple of data points that I have. I can only speak to Precision Hawk, but I think that this is one of the most interesting data points I have. A year and a half ago, our average contract value, uh, uh, the, the deal size we were dealing with companies that were deploying drone technology, was around $35,000. They were hiring one or two pilots, testing and gathering some data. Our deal, average deal size today is over $1 million. Uh, obviously an exponential jump, which illustrates the size of these drone deployments. Um, as a company, we're actually growing over 300% this year, year-over-year -year growth. So again, another indicator that we're starting to see a lot of momentum going up this hockey curve. However, why do I think that we're not on the other side of the chasm? Well, I mean, as a company, I can tell you that we've had to make adjustments and, and modify our business model several times along the way. I mean, not, not just uh, yearly, but sometimes even quarterly, we're making changes to fit where the market is going and to be more responsive to our clients' needs. So I can tell you that we're not yet on the other side of the chasm because we're still changing a lot as a company and an industry, but I can tell you because of the size of the deals, because of the clients that I'm seeing deploying this technology, I think we're near the end. And, and, and this is actually mirrored in other research that's out there. PwC put out this incredible report on the adoption of enterprise drone technology, and it talked about how actually in the energy space and the power utility space, they were the, the companies that were looking at deploying drone technology the most, and that's very much in line with what we're seeing at, at Precision Hawk. When we talk about the uh, energy market, they're using it to look at infrastructure across their distribution lines, their transmission lines, solar panel, wind turbines, and oil and gas. And they're not just using drone technology to collect the data, they're using machine learning and AI to then analyze that data and to turn it into useful business intelligence. 
This is actually very similar to what the telecom market is doing. They're using drones to fly over the cell towers now and then do everything from looking at the health of the uh, different antennas to the overall structural integrity, and they're using machine learning and AI to give them better business information. We also work with a lot of companies in the agriculture space that are now flying drones over their farms, and we've developed machine learning and AI for dozens of different plants and crops that can help analyze the yield and the health. A, a, a really something I think is gonna revolutionize the farming and agriculture industry over the next few years. Now, there are a couple other markets, the AEC market, the architecture, engineering, and construction market, and they're using drones and doing some basic uh, analytics and modeling, and that's very similar to what's happening in the general infrastructure market, whether people are using it for general inspection, digital twinning, or emergency response, where we have people that are um, often on site, collecting images, and just doing some basic 3D modeling work, so not yet doing AI and machine learning, but I think that'll come as well over the next few years. So, if I've talked about how you define uh, where the market needs to go, and I've talked about now where the market is today, let's talk about how do we, as a community, help the market get there? Help the market get where it needs to go to address these two primary pillars, improving the technology and improving the policy. Now, I can tell you what we're doing at Precision Hawk. We really have kind of three key tenants that we're focused on. Uh, we're building out our drone pilot network, we're focusing on machine learning and AI, and we're heavily involved in the industry. And let me touch upon each of them for just a minute. Now, when I talk about what we're doing um, with, with our drone pilots, we have a, a network of over 15,000 drone pilots now uh, across the US and even around the world. And we are able to work with companies to deploy those pilots to collect data on pieces of critical infrastructure. Uh, we then take that information and process it through our machine learning and AI, and we've started to now implement it with back-end systems at these companies. And that's how I know what we're taking that next step and crossing out of the chasm, because these companies are actually integrating this data that we're giving them with their back-end enterprise software solutions to make it part of how they do business on a daily basis. And I can tell you, we've racked up a lot of hours doing this already. Um, we've done over uh, 200,000 distribution inspections, 25,000 transmission inspections. Uh, we've logged over 20,000 uh, UAS flight hours. I mean, really, in the last year alone, uh, these numbers have increased exponentially, giving you just another sign of how and what type of adoption we're seeing in the industry. Now, when I talk about uh, drone pilots, though, I'm not just talking about deploying uh, individual pilots to be able to fly. At the same time, we know automation is going to be critical to the future of flying drones. So we've started building auto flight software that can help drones fly uh, agriculture, that can help drones fly windmills, that can help drones fly cell towers. And so therefore, the image capture is done the same way every time and done in the same type of a format, making it easier to analyze. And as drones uh, become more powerful and as we're meeting that hurdle for what needs to happen on the technology side, we can expect to see more and more automation as well. So now we're talking about, all right, we've collected all this great data. You know, we, we, we actually then say, all right, well, we have all this incredible data sets, so we now are able to run it through some of the great uh, AI and machine learning and computer vision technologies that are out there. So we've built these extensive data sets, uh, and then we've started to build AI and machine learning in the energy, in the telecom, and the agriculture space to make it even uh, easier for companies to say, I want to deploy drone technology, and for them to get good business decision-making capability out of the data that they're collecting. And uh, uh, you know, it, it, it's incredible. So we've started doing this where, uh, in the energy space, we can identify different uh, conductors and problems on utility poles and transmission lines that they were previously just hiring people to walk the lines and try to eyeball our systems to now pick it out at a much higher success rate. We're seeing over 30% improvement in us able to identify potential problems. And as I mentioned, in the agriculture space, there are now dozens of different plants and crops that we can do a full analysis on so people can improve their yield and have more successful farming. So that's what we're doing around the drone pilots, and that's what we're doing around machine learning and AI. But the most important thing is that we're taking all this and sharing this information with the industry and being here at conferences like Interdrone. This, to me, is the most important community out there, because if you're talking about being able to make these changes, if what we need to do is be able to say, hey, as a group, we need to work together to improve the technology and the policies, then it's, then it's conferences and organizations like Interdrone that bring together the right people to educate them on what's happening in the space and encourage collaboration across the UAV space. Now, beyond attending conferences like this and being an active part of the community, uh, we're actively involved uh, working closely with the government and the FAA as well. 
Uh, as I mentioned, we're, we're part of the Drone Advisory Committee, a group that works very closely with the FAA. Uh, we've been part of the uh, Pathfinder program, helping to work to identify uh, better ways to fly beyond visual line of sight. Uh, we're part of the uh, unmanned aircraft safety team. We try to be involved in as many ways as possible because we know for this whole industry to move forward, we need to be doing it lockstep and in partnership with the federal and state governments. Now, for those of you that aren't familiar with the Drone Advisory Committee, the DAC, now, the goal of the Joint Advisory Committee is to deliver a strategic guidance to the FAA. It's a number of the leading companies in the commercial uh, uh, and consumer drone space to work with them to safely integrate drones into the national airspace system. And, and this group works closely with the FAA to ensure that people have the proper framework for handling what we're now seeing is this exponential level of, of growth and deployment of drone technology. Now, as chairman of the DAC, we held our first meeting earlier this year and identified five key priorities that we think are it's important for this entire industry, the government, and the private sector to move forward on this year. We're talking about making giant improvements and step forward with remote ID, because I think this is going to be crucial for being able to uh, utilize drones for large companies in mass, and especially flying for beyond visual line of sight or for flying in more restricted areas. We're talking about improving the process around beyond visual line of sight, letting drones fly farther. Uh, and making sure the pilots are trained on how to handle those uh, more uh, technically difficult flying situations. We're talking about counter UAS, which I think has to be part of any discussion on improving the drone industry and moving it forward. We want to make sure we're improving the waiver process, adding more transparency and making it easier for companies to be able to get the waivers that they need to start utilizing drone technology. And also public-private partnerships. Not just having the government come out and the FAA saying, here are all the rules, without making sure that they're getting the input and getting all the strategic insight from the companies who are then going to be following and deploying and acting upon these rules. And the thing that, that runs through all five of these key top five, five priorities is safety. We need to be addressing each of these things in a way that makes it incredibly safe for these drones to be in our, air, in our airspace and incredibly safe for both the uh, commercial entities that are using them and the pilots that are flying them as well as all the consumers that are around. So safety needs to be woven into every single one of these things, and those are the top priorities that the DAC is focusing on this year. So I've talked about, uh, at Precision Hawk, the, the three core pillars that we have, our focus on the drone pilot network, AI and machine learning, and our, and our actively industry engagement, to be able to help move forward these two core pieces of what we think needs to happen for the drone industry to help get beyond this final stage of the chasm. So, the reason that I wanted to come up on stage and help open InterDrone, because I thought it was important for me to share my perspective on where the industry is, and the fact that what needs to happen is that we all need to be working together to improve the technology and the policy to help get over that chasm, to really establish this as a great growth industry and help get it to the next level. And for us to do that, we all need to work together on the technology and the policy, and we all need to be engaged. Uh, otherwise, it's all just horseshit. Thank you very much, everybody, and uh, it's going to be a great inner drone. Thank you.